Hi, welcome back. It's Brian here again, and uh, back again with our matchlock musket to look at maybe answering one of the questions that we get quite frequently. Uh, we're gonna talk about rate of fire today. So just exactly how fast is a musketeer? Okay, well, so in previous videos, we've talked a lot about the different types of firearms that are available to the colonists in this time period. Uh, what we're here to do today is to talk a little bit more about, I guess you could say, kind of the, the abilities or the performance of the, of the weapons, and specifically what we're going to look at today is rate of fire. Um, yeah, this is something that a lot of folks, especially modern day, get very concerned about, very hung up on, you know, what's the rate of fire, how fast can you shoot it? And while that's certainly a concern, it is perhaps somewhat less of a concern in the way we worry about it today for the folks 400 years ago. Realistically, what we're looking at for a matchlock musketeer in the late 16th, early 17th century is a rather different expectation uh, than what a lot of us worry about today. Uh, they're not expected to be able to hold a position by themselves. You know, this is very much a teamwork-oriented weapon, and what we see with the most commonly available manual uh, that we rely on here at our museum, the Degain Manual, is essentially what it's training a man to do, is starting with a loaded weapon, he should be able to fire it, reload and be ready to fire again within a minute. And realistically, what we've found is that with practice, 20 to 30 seconds is often all that's necessary to actually prepare that weapon for the next shot. Uh, so, you know, while we could speculate, and while some folks have certainly proven that you can routinely get two or three, potentially even three, uh, rounds a minute off with a match lock. How realistically applicable is that on a 17th century battlefield? Yeah, we know at this time, as opposed to, let's say, the 18th century, they're less emphasizing sheer rate and volume of fire with their firearms tactics and more emphasizing individual marksmanship in this time period. We certainly see situations in which they're, they're going for area saturation with ammunition and that kind of thing, but they're still really emphasizing an individual's ability to hit something up to 100 yards away. And if all you're doing is reloading and pulling the trigger as fast as you possibly can, you're not really taking the time to stop and aim. We see on the battlefields of Europe where you've got large blocks of musketeers serving as support soldiers to blocks of pikemen, that there's a lot of depth in many cases to these formations. In some instances, with the larger formations, even as much as 10 to 15 ranks of depth. That's 10 to 15 ranks of soldiers who are gonna be rotating as they fire, taking turns firing at the enemy. And while you might be capable of firing your weapon a couple of times a minute, maybe even three times a minute, realistically, it's going to be minutes, plural, before your rank is rotated to the front again and actually given another opportunity to fire. So they're, they're less concerned about how fast can you do it as an individual, and more concerned about as long as you can get ready to go again efficiently, how well do we all work together as a team? That's, that's the bigger concern. Um, now, uh, when we see you know the kind of ammunition that they're carrying and that sort of thing, very commonly for the musketeers by this time to help to expedite the loading process, they're loading from a bandolier. We see extant bandoliers with as few as five or six chargers. Again, each one of these representing a single shot. And extant bandoliers with as many as, as 22 chargers. Uh, and it, most commonly, they seem to be between 10 and 16. I've got 15 on my bandolier. Uh, so again, within that kind of normal range there. But it kind of shows the way they're intending to apply this weapon is not gonna be reliant on an individual dumping a tremendous amount of ammunition across the battlefield. Now, is that the end of my ammunition? Not necessarily. I could certainly carry an additional charging flask or even powder bag to reload the bandolier, start lo lo measuring out of uh, as I reload. But the intent is, is, is clear. I'm carrying 15 rounds. That doesn't sound like a lot from a modern perspective. If I'm part of a 100-man company and we've each got 15 rounds, 1,500 rounds is a lot to put into an enemy formation. And if there's still something left to shoot at, 
after you've put 1500 rounds into it, it's probably not a job you're gonna get done by shooting. So again, the, the way they're applying these weapons is gonna be a little different. That being said, since we still like to know just exactly how fast can it be done, we're gonna give it a shot today, see exactly how fast uh, I can go through a series of shots with this weapon. Present your piece, give, fire. Okay, so we can see there uh, four rounds in just a, a hair under a minute and a half. This is, of course, only one person's performance. I'm certainly not the absolute fastest musketeer ever either, uh, but that seems like a reasonable expectation. But again, there, I wasn't really stopping to take time to aim. And it's worth mentioning as putting a paper wad down the barrel instead of a lead ball, which could potentially affect how fast you're getting the projectile down the barrel. Um, but uh, again, not a weapon really built for a high rate of fire. And while with practice, you can certainly speed it up. Obviously the tactics with which these weapons are gonna be wielded is not going to be relying on a high rate of fire. They're going to be working around that slower rate of fire. Hence why we see these unit tactics. Uh, and again, multiple ranks deep in this time period so that you can take turns firing at your enemy and protect each other as you're reloading, give each other plenty of time to reload. Uh, and of course, the faster you're trying to go, the more likely there is you might also potentially make a mistake, especially if you're in a high stress situation. Another thing to bear in mind for our test today, nobody was shooting back at me and that can certainly make a difference. Well, we hope you guys enjoyed what you saw here today. We'd like to thank you again for tuning in. Uh, give us a like and a subscribe and any further questions about anything, leave them in a comment below. We'll see you next time. Okay, so we can see there uh, four rounds in, you know, again, a little under half a minute, or a minute and a half, excuse me. Let's, Let's start that. that over again. Yeah. <laughs> if only four rounds in under half a minute. Present your piece, give, fire.